Coffeezilla was talking to a journalist, John McDermott, about Jay Shetty. Have you ever heard of Jay Shetty? I have heard of him, yeah. He's a kind of celebrity guru type, spiritual, yeah. psychological advice figure. And there was a big expose in The Guardian published called Uncovering the Higher Truth of Jay Shetty by John McDermott. And it essentially reveals that he's a bit of a charlatan, <laughs> right? Like he's exaggerated his credentials. A lot of his authority rests on being a monk, but he was kind of unclear about a monk of what, of what tradition. He would just reference the Vedic tradition, but he was a Hare Krishna. And he also presents it as having like these transformative experiences where he encountered a monk. And before that, he was, you know, high-flying kind of management consultant. He was a secular guy. And then he, he came across this monk who transformed his life. But that feels to mention that he's been involved in the Hare Krishna movement since like a child. And there's videos of him online in material. So that Road to Damascus moment was perhaps not the thing which introduced him to the movement. He was like a leader in various camps and stuff. And, he, and he's exaggerated his credentials as many of these guru types do, right? So there's an interesting discussion over that Coffeezilla had with the journalist who did the investigative research on it. And that was very good. But it did make me think about a figure who I've seen coming up in various content recently because I've been looking at streamers. Have you heard of Dr. K? No, I've heard you mention him a couple of times, but I know very little. I think his name is Alok Kanojia, and he's... His online handle was Healthy Gamer GG, and he he rose up by doing like Twitch streaming content, but with a therapeutic bent to it. You know, initially I think talking about game addiction and social anxiety or these kind of things, and and doing streaming, talking about mental health, but more so I think rose to prominence by doing streams with influencers where it's not therapy, Matt. It's not, it's very clear. It's not official therapy, but he's just going to talk through the issues and ask questions that you might find therapeutic and that might be beneficial, but it is not a medical therapeutic encounter. And he is a licensed therapist. So that would be a problem if he was doing that kind of thing in public, right? Without all of the constraints. And the thing that I noticed as well when I saw a bit of his content, I saw various things where he'd interviewed an influencer and actually seemed, you know, mostly decent CBT style advice about, you know, how to reframe things or this kind of stuff. And maybe a bit psychoanalytical or whatever for my case, but, you know, basically reasonable. And then more recently, I came across an interview that he did where he was talking to another celebrity online doctor called Dr. Mike, who apparently is another big figure online. And it was called The Value of Eastern Medicine Ayurveda. And it's like a two-hour conversation about it. Now, Matt, we'll cover this conversation. So I'm not going to I'm not gonna spoil it, uh, all, all the stuff that goes on there. But suffice to say, it's very good content for us. And it will remind you of many things from the 90s and 2000s if you had any interest in complementary and alternative medicine. But mm -hmm. interesting parallels with Jay Shetty are that Dr. K also frequently references that he is he was a monk. I don't think he indicates what kind of monk, just a Vedic Eastern monk of some description, which is what Jay Shetty mm. used to say. So mm. kind of curious there. He also got controversy because he was giving, well, I guess not therapy, was having a chat with somebody, a streamer who was diagnosed with depression. And um, they had quite a conversation where the streamer got emotional, a bit distressed and so on. And the streamer went on to kill himself later, right? N uh, relatively not too long after the conversation that he had with Dr. K. So this is a problem, mm -hmm. an ethical quandary. Not, not to say that Dr. K is responsible for that, right? But if you are a trained therapist, 
talking with someone that's diagnosed with depression and is dealing with suicidal ideation or and mentioned that his family, his brother killed himself as well. There's ethical issues there, right? Quite large ones, I think. Yeah. Lou mean, sure. right? We'll get into all that when we cover them. But I have two clips for you, Matt, that I that I want to play. This is from a stream where Dr. K is on with his wife. Him and his wife are answering questions from the stream. Okay? And somebody pointed this out to me on Twitter whenever I was making some commentary about the Dr. K content. They were like, oh, you should see this interaction. They find it quite telling. I wonder if you will. So this is Dr. K with his wife, who seems a nice person from, you know, the bit on the stream that I saw. So here we go. So like Kruthi and I had a similar period where she was like earning in a functional human being. And I was like struggling to get into medical school. And and I think that... Okay. I knew you were going to be there. Um, yeah. So, but I, I think that, that, so that's what you know, right? And that's exactly what his girlfriend is telling him, right? So you're saying basically this sentence, I feel like I'm dragging the relationship down despite her telling me that I'm doing fine as long as I'm working on myself. Listen to her. Yeah. So I think the perspective, this person is asking for my perspective because I've been closer to that situation than you have. How to listen to her. <laughs> No, I mean, that's not sufficient. Go ahead. Um, so I'm a little bit concerned with how disrespectful you are to me on stream. Okay. What do you think about that? I'm serious. Um, okay. Do you understand what I'm saying? Tell me more. So, like, when you say go ahead, it implies that you're giving me permission to speak. Oh, that's because we were both talking, and then I was saying, you can talk. Like, you can I'm, talk. Right, and I will stop talking. So when you say, like, you can talk, that implies permission. What should I say? Um... I think maybe you should, if, yeah, I, th I think it should be a little bit more, like if I'm speaking, you should ask me if you want to interrupt to begin with. Okay. Right, instead yeah. of just. How's that, lad? Healthy? <laughs> I don't like that, Chris. I don't like that. That made my skin crawl. Ugh. Did that spark joy? Did not <laughs> spark joy. Ugh. Ugh. Uh, so the context there was they were asked a question, right? And she answered and may have spoke over him a little bit. I don't think she did, but in any case, no. she said, go ahead. And then yeah, and he had to set her straight. And it's not just the whatever it is, that ugly power game thing, but it's expressed in that new speak, that kind of, that kind of therapy language like i'm sharing my feelings and now i want you like it just goes to show doesn't it that you can you can put old wine in these new bottles and it's just the, it's the same old nasty shit that people have been doing for hundreds of years when you see that that kind of language like what do you think about that what like i'm serious what did you do you understand what i'm why i'm upset what why did you do that right yeah, that is yeah. Yeah. that's weaponizing therapy <laughs> it, it, it uh, is yeah, it's that it's manipulative, controlling. It just should be obvious to everyone what's really going on there. Like I don't like I'm coming at this completely cold. I know nothing about these two people, the context or anything like that. But yeah, I feel like I'm pretty firm ground to saying that that is not that is not the conversation that a well adjusted well adjusted person has with their with their partner. My mum would hit me over the back of the head if she ever heard me <laughs> speak to my wife like that. Yeah, and there was also two bits that I thought was kind of interesting about that. And again, it is, you know, analyzing a, a specific encounter, but nonetheless, so after he does that to her, she says, you know, do you understand what I'm saying? And then she doesn't know what to say. So she says, uh, tell me more. Right? So she kind of flips it. Judo, yeah. judo flips, yeah. like tell me more about why you're yeah. feeling this is not, this that is, way. This is, not the, this is not the first time they've done this little dance, I'm sure. No, uh, and yeah. she also asks some like after she's trying to defend herself by saying, you know, well, I was just saying, you know, you go ahead. And 
then she says, what would you like me to say instead? <laughs> he can't come up. Well, yeah. anyway, that's what that big, huge, uncomfortable pause is. Yeah. And, and what he could come up with was, you should ask permission before to you- To interrupt? Even, it which doesn't even, even make sense because you're so <laughs> interrupted. Like, excuse yeah. me. I mean, I'm thinking to interrupt you. Do I have permission to do that? That was so freaking weird. After it, it's extremely uncomfortable. They agree to move on and they make some jokes about arguing in front of the children, right? The, the Twitch chat, but the, the look in people's eyes suggest it's not exactly over, right? And then later, later, Matt, this happens. So this is after they've answered the other question, you know, they've moved on the other things and uh, this little callback happens. I think telling each other in the moment is way better than being like- Than stewing. Four hours ago, you did this and, and that- hurt my you feelings. Know, don't do that. Right, so like if, some, if, if, if someone does something that bothers you, you let them know then and there, even if it's awkward and it scares the children a little bit and it can feel awkward for both of us, but now we're fine, we're good. <laughs> and then we talk about it, we feel better. Is it okay if I go like this when you say, let's just think for a second? Sure. Okay. You can continue to mock me. I just felt slightly disrespected. And maybe it's because Twitch chat was calling you, was calling me a beta cuck. Y'all, come on. No, it's okay. It, I mean, they can call me a beta cuck. I it's just, if I feel been. disrespected, then I'll tell you. What does that mean exactly? A beta It basically like they're saying I'm whipped. Okay. Right, so. Okay. Am I whipped? What do you think? I don't think that's a thing. I don't okay. think, I don't think a given, I mean, that's the thing. Like sometimes you're going to be more dominant and I'm going to back down. Sometimes I'm going to be more dominant and you back down, right? Like it's never always equal. Okay. Um, let's do one more and then move to Twitter. Is it, is it over? I was not for <laughs> healthy processing. You know what it reminded me of? I recently watched that wonderful movie, Best in Show. You know, there's a very neurotic couple in there that's like these yuppies that they're super tense and, and, and they, they drive their dog, goes completely goes mental too and bites the, <laughs> somebody or whatever. And so they're disqualified. That's, that's who these people remind me of, like just that, that absolutely messed up kind of thing. But there's, there's all of this language, very, very middle class, very clinical speak. You know, this is, ugh. you find some interesting things on the internet for us, don't you, Chris? Yeah, yeah well, the, the thing which I noted from that, when she says, can I go like this when you ask me to think about it? Is she like points at her head, you know, like, so she's making a joke, like, you know, when you say, let's think about it, can, is it okay if I do this, right? Like kind of make a funny joke. And he, he looks, looks a noise and then said, you can continue to mock me. I just feel slightly disrespected, right? So he doesn't take the lighthearted escape and presents that as her continuing to disrespect him. And then he brings up the Twitch chat is calling him a better cock, <laughs> right? And he, he's kind of said, you know, yeah, I mean, I don't, I don't really care. They're just calling me a better cuck. But, but then he moves on to, am I a better cuck? Do you? What do you think of it? <laughs> just like, this is your healthy role model. You should just completely ignore. If anybody in your life ever calls you a beta cuck, like, just... <laughs> Take hand steps away from that person, right? I was mainly struck by just the levels of passive aggression throughout. Like he's like litigating. He's got some issue about not being respected enough and that she needs to be, you know, in her place and asking permission to talk and stuff like that. And he's worried about people on the internet calling him a beta cuck. I mean, beta cuck. Like, <laughs> it's just how absurd. I mean. Uh, the other thing about him that I think is worth mentioning that he's found a little bit of way round the issue with doing therapy online and it not violating your code of ethics because that would in so many different ways, especially when you bear in mind that this is public therapy, right? Like talking yeah. to people with a big streaming audience. There's a whole raft of issues there. <laughs> issues there, yeah. By framing it as one, not therapy, but two, spiritual guidance because he's also you know uh, interested in ayurveda and vedic practices and that 
he can present it as it's a kind of Eastern spiritual guidance. And then, Matt, the licensing bodies and whatnot, I feel like they are a bit scared to mm. try and address somebody who's claiming that they're doing a non-Western complementary or indigenous practice, right? You cannot apply the same restrictions to someone's spirituality as you would to their therapy, yeah. right? Well, religions of all kinds, Chris, have always had a get out of jail free card when it comes to professional exactly. and things like that, um, especially in the United States. So yeah, that is a good trick. But I'm just still flabbergasted how these two were reflecting on their own interactions just there and holding it up as an example to everyone about this is <laughs> this is how you should <laughs> oh, if you God. you know we were talking about people being somewhat like gullible towards the gurus if you look at the comments on the desk they're all saying how great this you know they're modeling how to do conflict resolution in real time and you know sometimes i feel uh, like we're just doomed we're just doomed if we, we, <laughs> just, like, <laughs> like, what the hell what's wrong with you people <laughs> everybody uh, would have arguments with you know a loved one or a partner there's always going to be strained times and nobody's relationship is is perfect right but i'll tell you this i've never spoken to a partner in that way by saying you disrespected me there and like you need to think about asking my permission before you interrupt me like that just that's not normal it's not normal it's i'm not sorry normal. there's issues sorry. there so yeah i'm not a therapist i'm just a practitioner of cabinology it's a ancient <laughs> spiritual practice so nobody <laughs> nobody tried to censure me by any professional bodies i'm just saying in cabinology that interaction is a little bit yeah. telling one of the things i really hate about language like like fashionable language and there's so many different kinds there's the sense makery type language the academic -y language there's the very corporate formal yeah. language and there's this sort of clinical language that there are so many ways in which fashions in language can be weaponized and because they're new, because they're kind of special ways of talking that people have bought into, you can so easily smuggle in like the worst kind of just old fashioned bullying, controlling, uh, yeah. insulting stuff. But as long as you do it using the right language, it's somehow it's a, it's a magical wand where it, it, you can get away with it. And I, I just really hate how effective that is in in all circumstances you know you see it in a corporate world you'll see it in an academic world you can see it you might see it world. in social justice circles from time Maybe. to time you might <laughs> you might possible. some people <laughs> might do that <laughs> yeah yeah no i mean but it's just a, it's a general observation isn't it that just be wary of these special coded language things they can so easily smuggle in just just use your common sense and think about what what is the person doing here in plain language and don't fall for it yeah yeah don't let anyone be passive aggressive to you and controlling and manipulative <laughs> like that guy is to his partner um that's my advice for young folks out there that certainly sounds like something you would normally say matt <laughs> <laughs> so you, you it's hard to it's hard yeah, to pretend there, to there, do there, it there, no, there, I can't, for a I second can't. you look confused you look confused you know <laughs> and so it didn't it didn't exactly go as intended that pun but you know i can be passive aggressive yeah, but yeah, not yeah. on command not on command that's the no, problem I don't come in. No, no. so we'll we'll look at dr k he's a streamer and there's a very interesting piece of contact with him talking to this dr mike guy and it, it tweaks my buttons because it's talking about alternative medicine and mm, different things and he, yeah. he's doing something more sophisticated matt than a deepak chopra person but not all together different anyway we'll see we'll have a look yeah. that's for another time for another time I, I read that article in the guardian we might even link to it but uh yeah it's no surprise that gwyneth paltrow is a a fan of this shetty fellow Jay Shetty. yeah he was in the white house you know he was uh, doing stuff with biden and stuff and it's just an example that there are lots of people that you know can have high profiles can be very successful and built on the foundation of lies, right? Like it's a, you, you see this all the time in like finance and whatnot, but it's, it's part of the reason why I feel like there are people who are millionaires or billionaires. I mean, just recently, Sam Bankman-Fried, right? Who was 
celebrated all over the place as a philanthropic billionaire who wants to give it all away, isn't interested in you know luxuries and whatever. And as various investigations have revealed, he was up to stuff that he knew was wrong, but also he was doing various things to try and manipulate his published image and, and so on. And he's been sentenced to 25 years for fraud, right? But just five years ago, he would have been a figure that if you were pointing out he's wearing no clothes or that all his fortune might be based on a mirage, people would have been yeah. looking at you askew. So there are other figures who are very wealthy and may at some point face similar consequences. It's it's unclear, but I just, just to say, don't assume that status and success and high profile equals that people are, you know, fundamentally honest and... And have good personal qualities. Yeah. No, 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 no. The, so most people should know that, Matt. They should know that. <laughs> but but it's, uh, it's, it seems to be something that people have to repeatedly find out. So yeah, 